Hello, bonsoir. On est sur Deep Black News, dans les plateaux de Deep Black News, comme d'habitude. On est là pour vous. On vous cherche toujours les nouveautés, les bonnes choses à Montréal. Ce soir, euh, nous avons reçu un très grand artiste, Nigeria, d'origine nigérienne. Il est ici à Montréal pour sa tournée. Donc, euh, moi, j'ai pu avoir ces contacts-là pour vous qui me suivez. C'est un très grand acteur. Ça fait des années que vous le connaissez. Comme c'est dans notre communauté qui est francophone, le Deep Black News, on vous amène quand même... L'interview va être en anglais. Moi, je pense que tout le monde de nos jours comprend quand même l'anglais. Donc, je vais vous laisser découvrir quel est l'artiste. Hey, Jim. Hey. How, how are you? you? I'm doing well. So... What brings you in Canada? Yeah. Well, Canada, that's a whole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I've been proposing visits here for a long time, but incidentally, it seemed to you know, conflict with all the schedules we've had for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, late last year, uh, we had, um, well, um, a great opportunity that came to us. And Fever TV um, happened to acquire the, um, the North rights of um, North American rights of um, my show Jamaican scripted mm -hmm. so we so we need to promote it and you know mutually support each other um, it was an amazing platform because um, they are probably the vanguard for um, um, the diaspora especially on the, um, within the Caribbean and African community as a medium and um, they quickly facilitated all the documents and so I came here okay. so I, I came on their platform to promote not only the station, the show, and, and see what Canada is about. Well, you know, I think um, when you start with a cliche that you stumbled into what um, used to be um, your lifelong pursuit, mm -hmm. for me, I think it's the reverse, really. Um, acting found me, you know, because um, I was out looking for something entirely different, and we to the collision course of sorts, um, of destinies. I, I, I trained in finance predominantly. I was pursuing um, my masters, and um, I had a short stint in the bank because um, you're required to work um, for uh, the government in a one-year stint called um, um, the youth service. Mm -hmm. So while I was working in the bank, um, I had this um, producer that, you know, it was a regular customer. He came to deposit um, large sums of cash constantly, and I, I got intrigued. Like, what do you do for a living? And, mm -hmm. and our course met, and every time he was there, um, I was the only guy in that bank that I would come to work with jeans and t-shirt, all <laughs> 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 oh, the jeans and a blazer and a tie, and I always looked different. And my supervisors complained um, endlessly, and he kept telling me mm -hmm. that, listen, man. You belong to another world. This is not your world. Yeah, I mean, you've got your education out of where. I think you should explore this world. Mm -hmm. And um, I discussed it um, consequently with my father, um, whom they didn't take too kindly to it. Um, the, the women of my home were a little excited about it. Okay. They thought, well, um, I happened to finish college a little early. I was mm -hmm. about 18. Mm -hmm. So they thought, you know what, give me a year or two. Let me go play the fields. And um, if it doesn't turn out well, I mean, he has something to fall back on. I go back to school and, and pursue my, my, my master and consequently my PhD. But, you know, um, uh, we didn't quite agree. And um, there were a lot of fights and he had to leave <laughs> his home. I left and um, I think in the pursuit to prove um, him wrong, to also, you know, stretch, you know, my pursuit of this to see if um, it's a dream that can be realized. Mm -hmm. um, I stumbled on what is to be my, my, my niche, my, my calling really. And uh, I think it's, it's been well, with long amended fences and then and, and it's, it's been like that the rest of my life. It's, It's simply what I was born to do. Okay, so you don't have any regret? Um, even throwing me, me out, I think was perhaps the best thing that I've done for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because um, the difficult life after that, I um, I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from, mm -hmm. where my next roof was going to be at, but um, it, it's a tough decision for father. I didn't understand it then. I thought it's a pretty hard decision to take on an only son, mm -hmm. but as I got older in life, um, it's something that I really 
I'll really throw my son out if if he was there completely in <laughs> conflict okay. with whatever principles of uh, ideals that I have planned out for him. But um, the kind of life I've lived, I'll probably be more open, more liberal to to his pursuits, mm -hmm. to his dreams. So I mean, African parents, you know how they are. They're very rigid in their in their mm -hmm. set, you know, uh, motion as to how you should uh, the the path you should follow in life. So so him. Um, I, I didn't judge harshly. I came to understand the kind of man he, he, he was, he is, and, and will always be. Um, he wanted the best for me, mm -hmm. but um, I had to learn what was best for me by finding it all by myself. So it's um, so you it find made me it. where I am today. I think okay. it's, it's practically what builds character. It's the measure of character mm -hmm. if you go out without um, outside your comfort zone and you survive. And it's, it's made me where I am today, really. Nice one. So, um, are you interested like, to be producer, movie mm. for your own? I think um, I've really lived the full circle in the, in, in the industry. Um, I did a short stint in, um, in New York Film School. Um, I wasn't really interested in it. I've never been one that learns very well in formal settings. Mm -hmm. I like to go out through tries and errors and um, through many feelings and then I'll succeed and I'll quickly adapt and, and, and adopt whatever notion that is that will lead me to mastering whatever it is that I'm involved in. Mm -hmm. I um I've been a, I've written about three scripts, I um stories, um two screenplays, I've directed about four films so far. I've produced about eight films, uh oh. executive produced four. Mm -hmm. uh, we did two in London some three years ago that was very interesting. I mm. I um well and I've participated directly and directly in over 150 films mm -hmm. so I think it's the, the confluence of all my involvement in, in the industry can you can um, it, when I was wet behind the ears and I was starting out mm -hmm. it's um I wanted to be in every shoe <laughs> that was available for me mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to be an actor and not understand a director's path Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a director, producer, and not understand what a writer. Or, you know, I always complained about certain language, um, <coughs> certain lexicons, in, in, in the content of the script I was given. And um, I've I've always been interested in writing, so I had to go brush up that skill. And I wrote a couple, and I was satisfied. And then it was different to be in the space where other people would critique my work. Oh yeah, for sure. But, yeah, so <laughs> it, so it, it it had to be. Um, then I, as a producer, I I would give other producers hell when I'm on set as an mm -hmm. artist. So tables were torn when other artists gave me hell for it. <laughs> and I came to understand and it made me a lot more sensitive to their plight. Mm -hmm. um, as a director, I I was directed in the beginning of my career by people that were far less knowledgeable than I was, mm -hmm. and that was very painful. You know, when you mm -hmm. sit down and when there's someone that had absolutely no notion, no inkling of what he's talking about, doesn't even know camera angles and all that, he's telling you what to do literally. And um, I thought it was an insult to my intelligence. <laughs> so I had a, I had a, you know, capacitate myself, so to speak, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, in different cap categories of the industry. And so um, when you arrive at that point where you can truthfully call yourself a chief, you know, mm -hmm. of your endeavor, I think it's a place where you can. You know, you, you, you're better established there. And I didn't understand as well what it meant to be an investor mm -hmm. in it because I don't share the risk. I get paid, I do the job I'm out. Mm -hmm. So now I put in my own money and I went through the sweating process of, <laughs> of, of whether it was going to make money back to me or not. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I took other people's money as well as investors and they were holding liable to that investment, then I had to explain to people, you know, as mm -hmm. to so it sharpened your business instincts as well and your acumen as a business. So it, it's 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 an entirety, it's a complete process, you know. It, it's what I wanted to do, and 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 so I had to, you know, when when you know that this is your lifelong pursuit, mm -hmm. you, you don't cut corners, you don't stop half. I don't do half measures. I've been through a lot to position myself, you know, in the industry. So I, I decided. I wasn't going to cut corners. I wasn't going to suffer less, you know, to gain greatly. I, I had to come as a bona fide 
you know, partition of the industry. <coughs> and I think that's what I, I set out to do. That's what I'm still doing. I mean, I, I dare say it's work in progress because new technology, new things, uh, the kind of new movie make, makers right now in the world that they don't use the, you know, the explosive uh, um, technology that's available. They're just so resourceful. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the things we are really proud of ourselves in, in Nollywood. We we are not availed the best of technology, mm -hmm. but we've come to understand how everything works in a shortcut format, mm -hmm. and still achieve the best possible results. It, it takes a certain gift, it takes a certain determination to make that happen. I've worked on both sides of the divide. Uh, um, when I shoot in Hollywood on Beverly Hills, I'm laid back because um, they. Where the division is absolute and people are allowed to do the best of what they, they, they do that. Okay. In Nollywood is different, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can be an actor, you're co-producing, you're co-writing, <laughs> you're deep. Then you don't forget things. Yeah, it's a, everybody, it's a, it's a mix, it's a, it's a very odd, odd place to be, but it sharpens different skill sets that you have. Mm -hmm. And then as time goes, you pick that which is prominent and understand better the niche you should involve in. Okay, so I have a question for you, like a producer, so there's a lot of French people outside, like, you know, you guys are like between Ghana and Nigeria, producer, and you do movies, and we really love it, so there's a lot of people outside there, but these French, they want to be into Nollywood, the African people too, what can you give them, like, advice to that are watching you, they have maybe the same, uh, the same dream like you, but they, they don't know how to do, how can they do to be in Nollywood? I think the strength of your conviction weighs heavily as to how far your dream can take you. I didn't let obstacles stop me. Mm -hmm. um, picture this, I was, I mean, I'm not from a rich home so far, mm -hmm. but I had my free square meals, I had mm -hmm. a roof over my head. I didn't lack the basic necessities of life. Mm -hmm. Then overnight, you're thrust into you know, the, 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 you know, into a world where you basically everything becomes a question mm -hmm. the time you should feed you with everything is highlighted and you will not take anything for granted i used to stop my finger and i'll be giving food now the scenario has changed where if i don't work or earn i will not eat for days sometimes two days yeah I mean, <laughs> you're totally, i don't brag about it it's it's a badge of honor seriously mm -hmm. because i um, understand how the world works better then mm -hmm. um i didn't know when a friend would get tired of me hanging around his ass and threw me out which was not even in contest from the life i came from mm -hmm. um i it, it's so i think um what it's the chief factor here is the language the fact that mm -hmm. it's a french-speaking country and our movies are predominantly done in English. So mm -hmm. go out there and chase your dream. How do you chase your dream? Understand the language first. Mm -hmm. Learn English. Okay. It's that simple. It's a very simple formula. I don't see what's coming. see, I see the small and all the big. You you focus on the big problem. While the little solution is just learn English, mm -hmm. it's the first step. When you learn English, you've broken the first barrier. Now you understand what we're doing. You can read the script for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can speak the language. And you go on to pursue your dream, which is train yourself and, and get involved. Everybody got involved. There's no magic trick to it. If I tell there's a shortcut, you must also recognize the fact that you do have a gift. A lot of people think, okay, it's acting. I mean, it should be relatively easy. <laughs> they give them a script and they freeze up. I've seen directors, gifted directors, that you thrust them in front of a camera. They can't deliver two lines. It happened in my, on my last set. We had um, two scenes that we thought, okay, let the director do. And this is, I'll tell you without missing words, is one of the most gifted young men I know behind the camera. We put him in front of a camera, he couldn't take two lines. Mm -hmm. You know? There are days I've had, as a director, what came very easily to me, which is acting, I can memorize. I can commit your whole script to memory in less than 10. I never read a script three times. I've never read a script three times. Yeah. The first time is the story to absorb. You know, you grow very numeric as you go. The second time is to characterize myself. I go through the process, uh, what I like to call the transmutation of, of the character you're playing. 
and after that you become one with the character right mm -hmm. um, but I never saw a need to read the script again now as a director that's a whole different role play I read that script over 20 times because they're knowing those they're they're they're, they're, they're there are translations, there are many things that are lost in the interpretation that a director cannot afford to let that slip in by. You understand? Mm -hmm. So these are all challenges that's peculiar to everywhere you stand in the industry. So if someone's argument is that I can't get involved in an industry because I don't understand the language, <laughs> I'll tell you that you're not ready for your dreams and the challenges that come with it today. Mm -hmm. When you make up your mind this is what you want to do, I don't think you're going to look at language as a barrier. It makes sense what you say, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of people, they, they don't have the capacity of learning English, like me. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yep. So, uh, over. Let's sometimes it. they just want to be there, but they need also to have opportunity because like in the um, industry, like for French people to get inside there, they don't have choice to pass through Nigeria or Ghana. Mm -hmm. so, Somebody is like in Cameroon who is just near you to be the industry. May, yeah. may I come in here quickly because I know where the <laughs> question is going. I had the um, opportunity of working in Cameroon for one and a half months. Mm -hmm. um, well, it was a similar you know, position like this that happened. Um, I happened to be the favorite um, celeb of um, your former prime minister's wife. Mm -hmm. And then um, for her birthday, she asked that if I come for her birthday, that would be the biggest birthday wish. So her husband, whom is the former prime minister, the last ex woman, small good me to, well, I like to call his bazaar, so I'm glad about it, brought me to the country. And on the day of or the occasion of her birthday, they presented me before her, and she thought it was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, the thing about it when we came in was that after that, we sat down and they said, okay, how can we develop the industry? And I offered one or two proposals as to how this can can move forward. And they 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 um they contracted me to come and work there for one and a half months. Within which time we produced about three movies, I think. Mm -hmm. When I came, that was the best huge challenge, the first huge challenge, which is the language barrier. My 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 French was sparing, and then um, their the English was even worse <laughs> than my French. So. <laughs> How are we going to do it? You know, I, I wrote the script, I brought my team in. I mean, we're well catered for everything we demanded, we're given. Mm -hmm. But that was the biggest challenge. I saw amazing actors that I could not explain. You know, the language was a big barrier. <laughs> so I switched teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got um, the French people to write scripts mm -hmm. and got the English people that spoke French to translate and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, shoot this movie in French so everybody will be at liberty to, to act, you know, to, to do what I think they do best. Then bring it, we translate it in English. And I, we, we shot another movie where <coughs> we taught them on set. I mean, I've made movies where <laughs> I, I was, you know, different languages where I was taught um, the language on, on set. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we kind of be out of just sheer determination and weight power. We made three films. These guys were sitting in front of a camera. I mean, they, when they saw the movie, a lot of them didn't believe. I mean, these are guys that if up until the release day, their English was still terrible. But when they see the movie, the movie somehow, you know, it was making cut sense. across. It made a lot of sense. <laughs> so it's about you know when when you let the uh, you know. An obstacle defeat you. Yeah, that's it. You, you you didn't want it bad enough. Mm -hmm. If you want it bad enough, and these are guys. After that, they say, you know what? Uh, you know, I'll go and on this. Uh, let me quote one one of my closest guy. I really got really close. He said, you know, you inspire me. I go. I learn English at at, at all costs. <laughs> I said, what? Co he said, I don't care. I learn it any way it is. However, it, I said, it's not something you go pluck from your tree, man. You, you got to put in the work. You know, this is a new age of computer and mm -hmm. unbelievable access to information on the internet. It's, it's almost limitless. So, I mean, the guy got on programs, you know, their friends to translate, mm -hmm. you know, programs you can get on. And he did it, and he went to school. You know, with short, short-term schools for for English, 
and he's improved impeccably. Wow. The last time I spoke to him, I was waiting for, apart from the heavy accent, I was waiting for mix up in tenses like he usually does mm -hmm. and all that. But the dude was on top of his game. We're using him for our next project. Wow. And so that's the power of sheer will. I, I don't think, you know, your geography or your lack of a, uh, a language, but you know, so many other excuses people give as to why they don't want to chase their dream. Mm -hmm. Do you think after I left home at that point, when I knew that I didn't, I had no option on my table. Mm -hmm. I met a French producer that was ready to give me work. So I'd make money and eat. And he gave me, say, a month or two to learn French. You, th you think I would speak the language impeccably? You know, in two months? <laughs> maybe. That's my only calling shot. You think I wouldn't put. Maybe. So that's the whole point. Not maybe. I promise you I would. <laughs> that's good. Because I know that it was survival. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's it. It's, uh, the, the, you want it bad enough. To survive, how how huge is your hunger? My my hunger is always big. I think my hunger grows by the day. That's, <laughs> uh, it scares me. There are mornings that wake up. I feel I haven't started, you know, because I placed before me models of people that have achieved greater dreams, no greater goals, mm -hmm. and um, you just know you're starting no matter where you go. There's always somebody that there's ten steps ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Think of those people, and think of. You see, I like to follow the career of men that have made it in life, not just in the industry, but made it in life. Mm -hmm. I don't follow their motives of parandu, but I say, yeah, I follow the substance of their story, of their victories, of their triumph. You know, so when you know, learn how to turn your tragedies to triumph, you, you understand that there's no, all the limitations in mm -hmm. life is just here. Mm -hmm. you know? That's cool. So, comme vous avez bien entendu, il dit qu'il faut quand même apprendre la langue parce qu'aujourd'hui, quand même, l'anglais est une langue très internationale et on est limité, nous, les francophones. On ne dit pas que le français n'est pas bon, mais aujourd'hui, ça demande le français pour progresser, surtout avec Nollywood. Ça demande au moins l'anglais de base. Donc, euh, c'est ça. On continue. So, I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to enter to your personal life, but it's a lot of fun. It's a fun name. There's a lot of fun out there. They want to know. <laughs> Are you married? Why are you laughing right I'm now? I'm just laughing because it's too. <laughs> My question is that's. Great. Are you married? My life is a huge speculation. Mm -hmm. just, um, it's all I have. Just, you know, apart from, well, my gifts. And one or two other little small pluses that gets me ahead in life. Um, okay. I think the fact that I've left a lot of question mark in my life is <laughs> i enjoy it it's the only thing that i have going for me so people can I, sell a heart something I let, I let that go i have nothing more to sell <laughs> I was like, i'm done I'm out, boom, I'm out of the industry so so i i, I give yeah, yeah, you know everybody i think everybody my dad said every man mm -hmm. of substance has three lives mm -hmm. you have the public life you have the private life, mm -hmm. you have the secret life. Okay? Mm -hmm. The public life is out there, it's in social media, it's in people's speculations, it's in everything that has been deemed people, you know, it's filled fantasies, it's, mm -hmm. it's created, you know, all kinds of speculations. And I think I dare say even fills people's fantasies, I mean, people's, <laughs> you know, fears as well. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we induce a, a whole healthy dose of fear sometimes. Um, I have the private life. It's the one a lot of people don't know well. Okay. But my trust circles know that. They know that I'm a private person. They know I love to read. I love to watch them. I love to be private. I love to stay on my own a lot. I'm mm -hmm. a lot of students a loner. And they know I don't drink. They know certain things that mm -hmm. is not out there. Um, so to feel the brand, to feel a certain idea people have of you, of the brand, we throw the white chart to them. Mm -hmm. I can't be anything else. I visited heads of states. I visited people at the top in terms of governments. I'm in a nice suit, folded legs, and I'm trying to discuss business. And I do know what I'm saying because I have, uh, I'm trained in it. And they're not impressed. They don't want to. They, they think I'm, it's another role I'm playing. Mm -hmm. I start acting crazy, dressed a certain way, my shirt on top. I'll be welcomed. Mm -hmm. I've broken many, you know, um, attire demands for lack of better words in occasions where perhaps they could say okay something like um, a black suit event mm -hmm. um, I go in there with shorts and t-shirt 
for instance, and break all protocols. They like that. They say, okay, it's Jim, let him in, it's cool, you know? Mm -hmm. I go properly dressed, formally dressed like everybody else. I find that I'm ignored. Mm -hmm. So that white child serves its purpose. The private is for my family, mm -hmm. my trust circles, people I grew up with. They're still in my life and will be in my life for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. The secret life is what nobody in life. And I'm, I, 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 I really emphasize on it. My, well, the lady that is lucky enough to have me, oh. Seriously, right. that, that, that <laughs> women choose you, you don't choose women. The one that chooses me, mm -hmm. that you know, grants me the honor of, of taking me as a man, and the kids that I, I, that we have as a family are the ones that witness my secret life. Okay. And come, come what me, no matter how closely scrutinized I am, no matter the focus, the spotlight, and whatever, nobody will know my secret life. So I think when you, when you spread this evenly, I can live with certain sacrifices. Like sitting here and talking about stuff that people think they know about me. <laughs> you know, so, okay. That's okay. how I think I that's can live cool. with that, yeah. So these are uh, little hope, maybe girls. Mm -hmm. uh, on va continuer uh, la chipo. Which yeah. means, which means, <laughs> I'm coming back to that, that I could be married, I mean, I mean, I never know. Il n'y a plus de soir. Yeah, no hope. No, I could. I might not be married. I could. Be married. You never know. I just make it ambiguous. You know, it's an ambiguous entity. That's I like to be yeah. like that. But you know? if you have an August to take a risk and want to know better, hey, I'm not running. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, girls. I think there's a little bit of the chance of all. <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> People want to know they. I read somewhere in internet, I know it's sure because you confirmed me before we start this. Mm. You born in Gabon. Yes. That is Liberville, huh? yes. the capital. Mm -hmm. And that is a French country. Do you stay there for long or you just leave and you go back to when you explain to us that you Well, my dad worked for a construction firm called Spivak. Mm -hmm. um, I think in between when, before he left Nigeria. To start work as a young man there his boss was very kind to him and he was a hard worker it was well you know every dad likes to say they're smart so he said he was very smart and his wife his boss <laughs> liked that so well there must be something there because when his boss left i'm not sure he was short of staff mm -hmm. but he took my dad and um just before then he met my mom and i don't know within which period i was made but um are you serious a couple of kids <laughs> <laughs> I like what I'm messing with, like, I guess, man. But, um, yeah, we, 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 we moved to Libreville. My first two sisters mm -hmm. were born. I'm the third, I'm the third child. And mm -hmm. then, um, right after me, the next one, um, the fourth was, was born. And then we came home. I was, I think, about nine. Oh, okay. So yeah, you could nine. speak a little bit French. Yeah, je comprends French. Oh, ça c'est sexy, yeah, Santa. <laughs> Okay. But my, my parents and my sisters they speak impeccable French. I'm mm -hmm. um, the renegade that left home early and kept, you know, when when they it just it just didn't work for me. I'm not <laughs> too much of a you know French guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, but yeah. but I um I had the occasion of being with a very beautiful um lady some time back in my life that was mm. French yeah, French lady and um she, she brushed up my French but you know you, you learn quickly when there's romance when and then we broke up. I didn't see any need to go. <laughs> but, but I know enough that cab drivers never cheat me. They're always trying to give me the run around and they start speaking for like, yeah, it's a yeah. black guy. I think he has money. I'm like, yo, it's, it's an apartment, of Lajon, man. I don't know. I, I, I my keys. So, yeah, I, I know enough to do my trading in Paris. Near enough that cab drivers can cheat me or, mm -hmm. or, or you know, so we, we, we keep it moving till hopefully another romance will come along and we'll brush up on our French. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so all French girls, if you met Jim, he knows French. Don't, Don't say talk stuff about my back. I keep catching you guys. I've had two girls <laughs> behind when I at one time they were discussing me in French for ten minutes. I let you guys enjoy yourself. You know yourself wherever you are in the world. Then I busted your bubble right after that. So please don't don't say stuff around me. So he's a French guy. Mm -hmm.
but half French. Yes, half. Enough to catch you. That's what's important. <laughs> that's so cool. So the next, the, yeah, there's a there's a lot of fans in my Facebook. They just said, can you please ask Jim to act something? Just try to act because you are a big actor. You know how many fans you have there. I was like, like all all French country love you oh, yeah, because. So 2001, you started doing your movie thing. Mm, two, more two, yeah, a little bit. So there's a lot of people who like you. Like they like you when you wear African dress. Mm. When you're too bad, they see you bad boy. All oh, girls like bad boy. Mm? We agree. So um, they wanted you to act something a little bit, but romantic. I, I just did though. No, the not that the part one. I did, uh, especially. <laughs> Communities come out in mass once uh, we have something to do in Paris and Belgium. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Um, you know, sometimes a man says um, you can't count your blessings. Mm -hmm. um, they, they make it so hard to do. I'm beyond being appreciative. I've been doing this a long time. Um, at some point, I just thought, okay. Why me? You really begin to feel special. You really mm -hmm. begin to feel chosen. Um, <coughs> it, it's it's you know we get a fair degree of criticism. Um, it could make you cynic very easily. I just choose not to. I I embrace love totally. I'm a you know I'm a proponent of it. I propagate it. It's my gospel. Mm -hmm. It's my ideology. It's uh, it's everything that I stand in for life. And the people that give it to me. Um, in abundance like they do from your part of the divide it's, it's just what makes me wake up every day and, and beat my chest that I couldn't be more blessed in my life so, so they, they're the vehicle that take me everywhere I go you know? I'm just um, the car you know what I'm saying? so it, it's it's an amazing feeling every time I think about you know I, I you have when I'm on social media when we have an event and and these girls will laugh I like your women they're passionate, you know. Mm -hmm. Even the dudes that don't like you are passionate about their dislike for you. Mm -hmm. Everything about them is just passionate and it's passion driven. And you can you can you can't go wrong with them. I've, I've had very good moments. I've recorded very great moments in my life because of your people and I appreciate that very much. Okay. C'est un homme comme toutes les hommes. C'est pas un coureur de jupons. Il vous a expliqué, il a sa vie secrète, il a sa vie privée et il a aussi la vie de public. Donc les choses que vous voyez sur internet ne veulent pas dire seulement que c'est vraiment ça qui est écrit. L'internet c'est du bullshit. Donc il faut continuer à croire en lui, à l'aimer. C'est toujours un grand acteur et euh, on se va se retrouver. On va le laisser un peu faire un petit mot, un petit coucou en français pour nous avant de clôturer cette soirée avec vous. So you're gonna say something in French? Because we are already in the end. Okay, yeah. mon chéri. Um. Oh man. Okay. Do you my want friend, help? My friend just. <laughs> Do you want help? You see what I mean? You see, <laughs> now you can appreciate it when she tries to speak English because mm. now I'm trying to speak French. Yeah, and, that is a point. And I'm, I'm having a um, brain freeze, but anyways. Um, just put any French, you know. Okay, chéri. Um. 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 Je Je t'aime. Je, um, je vous aime. Um, beaucoup. Mm -hmm. um, um, I love you guys for life. Can you help me with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, je vous aime pour la vie. No. Je vous aime pour mm -hmm. la vie. Okay. And um, I am thank you for all your support over no, the years. No, in French. Merci. <laughs> Merci. It's lost in translation anyway. So <laughs> Thank you for the we look like support a pastor. Then, <laughs> I'm not translated. Yeah, I say it and she translates. So I'm about thank you, appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm, we're planning a tour of francophone countries very soon. We are, we're coming with something in agriculture that is amazing. I'm getting some really amazing geniuses on this platform to go around and just provide opportunities for our people. It's called Ada Commercial. I'm sorry we didn't talk about it. I'm taking mm -hmm. the leeway to. Um, I happened to draw some um, extremely wealthy people on the platform recently and we created um, an entity called Ada Commercial. Um, it's driven by profits of course mm -hmm. but we also have the charity part of it 
Uh, we grow rice. Uh, we have we own a farm in Liberia. Mm -hmm. I'm vice president of um, Ada Commercial. The president is Ambassador Win um, uh, Window McIntosh, mm -hmm. who is um, ambassador alike of the UN and. Um, um, also, the chairman is um, it's um, Ben Uri, who happens to be one of the biggest um, rubber farmers and the owner of MTN Liberia. Mm -hmm. So we created something is to subsidize rice for our people. We have a five-year contract with ECOWAS that I just signed recently, mm -hmm. and um, we, we just plan to bring food to our people and employ. We're planning that after. Um, Ebola and whatever mm -hmm. it is that, that is <laughs> over there, we're already building our processing plant before Ebola stroke. Mm -hmm. So we had to give way. But when we come back, we're looking at providing over 5,000 job opportunities mm -hmm. for people across the whole divide mm -hmm. and setting up this in all the member states of, um, of ECOWAS and also building food banks as we go. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the, the, the opportunity is mind blowing. I'm so proud to be a part of that. I'm so proud that, that we initiated it and um, this is part of what we're going to come to with different countries to promote. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as we bring our love and goodwill, we also bring in commerce, we also bring in employment, we also bring in wealth to our people. We're bringing empowerment. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, it's an amazing thing. I can't begin to commute it. I can't begin to quit the, 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 the horizon that we can reach with this. And um, I'm just, I feel blessed to be, to be a part of it. <laughs> Donc, si ça, on est arrivé à la fin, c'était donc Nayana pour vous, dit Black News. À la prochaine chicane.